Welcome to Altium Designer DRCs on PCBs. In this module, we will learn about running design rule checks on our WC topping PCB. The PCB has been routed and polygons added at this point. We would now want to run DRCs to ensure that we do not miss any routes or have any issues before going to manufacturing. Having rules in place provides the needed checking for manufacturing. Opening up the Design Rule Checker from the Tools drop down menu, we should first explore the setup. At the top level, we have options for creating reports and what will be included in those generated reports. Diving deeper under the rules to check, we see all the rules listed with online or batch mode enabled. While this is a nice summary, looking at each subgroup is a little simpler. We'll start with the electrical. Here we can enable and disable the various rules when either running online DRC or running batch DRC checking. I would leave them all on as they are important for achieving success with your completed PCB. Looking at routing, again we have online and batch checkboxes. These are normal settings to use. Test points. I'm not using test point rules for the class and therefore have them all disabled. If your design or company requires test points, then these should be enabled and the rules configured for your particular design. The manufacturing group is mostly enabled for batch runs, as you can see. In some cases, I enable the online DRC when doing placement, and then I disable the online DRCs later on. The high-speed group for this design is not so much an issue. But for yours, consider keeping them enabled in the online and batch modes for the DRC. Again, they will need to be set up in order to perform the needed checking. Looking at placement, we see that all are checked, and they all should be. The signal integrity category is an advanced topic covered in advanced PCB training. One thing that always gets me at least every few weeks is hitting the OK button instead of the Run Design Rule Check button. The OK is just to save our current setup and then close the window. Clicking on the Run Design Check kicks off the DRC, and when it's finished, a report window will open up. Here we see the Design Rule Verification Report with the summary of violations, as well as sections detailing the violations for each group. Scrolling down, we can see the subgroups with the details. Clicking on a violation brings us to the PCB for that violation. Note the violations are highlighted in a bright green. I find this summary most useful. Well, at least when it's a clean report, I find it useful. Normally, I use the PCB Rules and Violations panel to sequentially find and fix reported violations. Let's open this panel and start to look at the violations. The PCB Rules and Violations panel lists all the rules and allows for running of any individual rule or all the rules directly from the panel. The violations are all listed in the bottom section. They are populated because we just ran the DRC checks. We can clear all of the reported violations and the green highlight from the PCB by clicking on the Reset Error Marker selection from the Tools drop-down menu. Scrolling down to the bottom of the PCB Rules and Violations panel listing, we could left-click on the All Rules entry and then by right-clicking open up a pop-up window this menu offers the option to run the selected entry. In this case, all the rules would be run. We could also clear the green highlights and the listing of violations from this pop-up window if desired. My approach is to start with the unrouted nets and progress through the rule list in the panel finding and fixing violations on the way. Let's select the unrouted nets, and if needed, we'll run it to see all the reported unrouted nets. Double-clicking on a violation entry opens up the Violation Details window, showing the violation's details. Clicking on the Jump button zooms into the area on the PCB, and then clicking on the Highlight button momentarily highlights the offending objects in the PCB. This can be a little hard to see, so you may have to click it a couple of times. Here we see that Pad 3 is not connected to ground, as the Polygon Pore was prevented from filling in this area. Adding a trace with a via will connect this pad to the ground on the bottom polygon pore. Rerunning the unrouted nets will show that this was fixed. Fixing the other unrouted nets would follow the same process. Moving on to the silk to solder mask clearance, 
We see the reference designator is too close to the pad and needs to be moved. Moving all the silkscreen text that overlaps pads will clear up a number of these violations. These violations are typical of the needed cleanup post routing and placement. One artifact of the online DRC being enabled for this rule checking is that when we fix a violation on the PCB, it is cleared from the listing. Looking at the silk to silk clearance checking, let's look at the rule driving the check. As an illustration of how to access the rule from this panel, clicking on the silk to silk clearance populates the rule in the middle window section. Double clicking on this entry opens up the PCB rule where we could review it or edit if needed. Running the rule check now shows a single violation. We double click on the entry and jump highlight to find out what the issue is. As with the silk to solder violation, these are typical reported violations that occur. This violation is a result of the J4's connector footprint silk screen and can be ignored or, if you prefer, fix the footprint. By now the process should be clear. Run the individual rule, double click on the listed violations, jump, highlight, and fix. Then rerun the rule to check to make sure that you've cleared up all of those particular rules. I always check for shorts just in case a PCB inspector global edit may have caused a short. Checking the routing via style, we get the expected violations as the rules were not set to allow for the mounting hole sizes for the Raspberry Pi. We can check on the rule that generated those violations and update it from here as this would make sense given these four holes are for mounting to the Raspberry Pi motherboard. Double clicking on the rule entry opens up the PCB rules for editing. Now that we've updated the rule for the mounting holes, rerunning will show no more violations. Running the clearance rule shows two violations caused by the increased clearance rule for the 12 volt nets. The two capacitors that violate the rule violate it based on their pad geometry. We should fix the rule to accommodate them. Opening up the clearance rule for the 12 volt net, we will modify it to exclude these two components. Let's change the second object query to not check C3 and C4. Clicking on the custom query, and then we select Query Helper, let's find the component membership query and add that to this rule. We can double click on the in component entry and that adds it to the query window. Now moving on to the query window, start typing a single quote inside the parentheses and that will give us a list of possible candidates. We'll pick C3. Now we will add the or to the query and now that we know the right query entry, we can start to type it in and then pick the correct suggestion. Pick C4 this time for the component. Now we are selecting either C3 or C4 with this query. What we want to do actually is to not select either of these two when applying this rule. So we would add parentheses and the logical not. Clicking OK puts this new rule query we had just built into the rule. Looking at the 12 volt clearance rule now, we will exclude those two components from this test. Rerunning the clearance rule group is now clean. Notice both C3 and C4 are no longer green highlighted. Running the component rule check, we see a number of violations. The first few violations are a known issue due to the three 8-pin connectors being used as a PWM type of connection. These butt up against each other and we can ignore these rules. Normally I would create the proper 3-pin by 8 PWM connector footprint. The last violation, however, we do need to check. Double clicking on it, we zoom in, and at first I don't see the issue necessarily. But looking at the reported collision between C3 and the power connector, it becomes clearer when we switch to 3D. We can now see the issue. The power connector is placed on top of C3. We will need to move C3 to fix this. The last check I run is for the board clearance. Let's look at the rule. This rule was added manually as the default rule set does not include the board clearance. Running the rule, we see that the silk screen is too close to the edge of the PCB and needs to be moved. I would recommend adding the board clearance rule as it can aid in manufacturing yields.